Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Here live in New York City with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, what about pre-trib? Melanchthon was right. Philip Melanchthon, or Philippus in Latin, Melanchthon was Luther's essentially deputy or adjutant. He did not have a lot of the personal dynamism of Luther, but he was an accomplished scholar and he was a man of some integrity. Now, <clears throat> Melanchthon is often faulted by trying to find a rapprochement between Catholicism and Protestantism. And some say he went too far to accommodate it. But he did draw a line in the sand. He did draw a line in the sand when it came to the gospel. He would not accept <clears throat> the uh, hyperdulia, or he would not accept the veneration of saints. <clears throat> he would not accept the Roman Catholic version of synergism, where salvation was by some kind of works. He stated firmly the gospel is justification only by faith, and he would not accept transubstantiation. Although he did, like Luther, accept consubstantiation, he did not accept the idolatry of transubstantiation, nor did he adhere to all of the Augustinian teaching that was adopted by Luther concerning predestination and things of this nature. <clears throat> Melanchthon has made many famous statements, but perhaps the most famous is his adiaphora statement, his adiaphora epigram. And he said this, in essentials, unity, in differences, liberty, in all things, charity. In essentials, unity, in differences, liberty, in all things, charity. In essentials, he would not compromise the gospel. He would not compromise the idolatry of the mass and transubstantiation. To him, those things were essential, and all Bible-believing Christians had to be united in accepting a scriptural understanding of the gospel and in rejecting things that fundamentally contradicted the teachings of scripture that were in Roman Catholicism. He drew the line. But in differences, liberty. He said there were things that did not affect salvation or the authority of Scripture or bring us into praxis that was directly contrary to the Word of God. He said in those things, we should give others the liberty to disagree with us, even though we don't agree with them. We can maintain and argue our point, but we should give liberty, have a wide spectrum for opinion, as long as it was not an essential being compromised. And then he concluded it in all things charity. This was his adiaphora, adiaphora meaning uh, non-essential. Well, again, as we said before, Jesus spoke of the weightier matters of the law. He made a distinction between a camel and a gnat. Now, nobody wants to swallow a gnat. The gnats need to be strained. But a gnat is still not a camel. And we should not be straining that when there are camels running around and people are eating that. <clears throat> a distinction must be made between a gnat and a camel, as we've said. Jesus drew that distinction and said that while everything in God's word is important, there are weightier matters. Today we have a very sad situation where there are many, many of my brethren in Christ and your brethren in Christ who honestly believe that pre-tribulationism is a doctrinal essential. It is a fundamental. Now, even though those same people would never base another doctrine on something they could not exegetically prove with a passage, they make an exception for pre-tribulationism, largely the invention propagated by John Nelson Darby in the 19th century. 
Why would they do this? Again, as I said many times after the president of Dallas Seminary, Dr. John Walbert, stated that there's no one passage that teaches pre-tribulationism. It's an opinion we glean as an overview. They can't show you any passage. Bogus attempts to try to redefine the meaning of the word apostasy as the rapture by people like Thomas Ice and others uh, are ludicrous. Uh, even in the eyes of many pre-trib scholars, they don't believe this nonsense. Uh, they tried to take the word paresmos, the hour of testing, and make that the equivalent of the full seven years. So they've taken the word thelipsis, tribulation, and tried to make that the full seven years with no exegetical license to do so. In the Greek, as we said many times, is a distinction between the period of wrath, or gay, and the period of tribulation, thelipsis, and megathelipsis. They have to read things into the text that are not there to arrive at this doctrine. Now, you can believe it as a doctrine, but you cannot prove it from Scripture. It's an opinion. It's a deduction. It's not something that can be inductively arrived at. Honest pre-trib scholars have admitted this. But in the last decade or so, particularly, and it's increasing, we have people turning it into a, such an essential that, again, and I don't want to, at the risk of sound like a broken record, you have Paul Wilkinson in England saying people who don't believe it don't love Jesus Christ. Or there's some crackpot in England who actually says those not agreeing to it are heretical and that it's leaven. No. Nats or nats and camels or camels. Now, even if pre wrath people or intra seal people or post trip people are wrong, even if those people are wrong, that would be nats. Yes, the gnats must be strained, but straining a gnat is not the same as swallowing a camel. Those who deny there is a rapture, now we have a camel, as I've said before. Again, I've re repeated these things. They are making a fundamental something that is not a fundamental. They have no exegetical case to treat it as a fundamental essential doctrine. None. Dr. Walbert admitted it. It was not believed before Darby on any kind of a wide scale. None. Yet they're fighting for it. As if they would be finding or fighting for some essential truth as if they were fighting for justification by faith or salvation by grace or the authority of scripture against tradition, as if they were, you know, fighting some doctrinal fundamental. It is not a doctrinal fundamental. That there's a doctrinal error. Either the pre-trib people are in error or the pre-wrath and the intra people or post-trib people are in error. There's obviously somebody's in error. But the distinction must be made between a gnat and a camel, as we said, or between an adiaphora and an essential. Why these people are so misguided into thinking that they're defending something that's absolutely a vital truth as if they were defending, you know, the, the authority of scripture or, or salvation by grace or the truth of the resurrection or the deity of Christ. The timing of the rapture is not that. When people who all believe in the rapture place it at different timings, it is not an essential fundamental. Is it important? Yes. Should it be discussed? Absolutely. Melanchthon, Philip Melanchthon was right. Adia for I think infant baptism is a terrible, terrible thing. I think it is a damaging thing. I will argue against it vociferously. It is totally wrong. But don't tell me that there are not people who believe it who are not truly born again. There are. They're mistaken in my view, but they're my brethren. 
I am pre-millennial, 100% pre-millennial. As much as I otherwise respected him and esteemed him, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was wrong on that point in my view. Don't tell me he was not a man of God. These things are important. But by believing them, they're not swallowing camels. I will argue, I will contend, I think it's something we need to deal with. The minds? Why are they fighting over this like it's a fundamental? I will tell you why. The Holy Spirit is showing more believers, honest believers who love the Lord, that Jesus is not only coming soon, but we have to prepare the way for his return. This idea we just have to hang out and wait for it to happen. There are no signs of imminency. Don't worry about identifying the Antichrist. We're getting ready for the tough challenges ahead that believers are already facing in communist and Islamic countries. I've got to go back to Vietnam in a few weeks. Don't tell me that the Christians in California and England and Australia and Canada don't have to suffer because they live in Protestant democracies, that they're somehow better than the Christians in Vietnam. No, the Christians in Vietnam are better Christians than they are, than we are. They're being persecuted and they're faithful in their persecution. They're better believers than we are most of the time. The Holy Spirit is showing people not to believe this garbage, that just because you live in a Western democracy, you're not gonna be persecuted. You're going to be rescued before anything happens. The Holy Spirit is showing believers the Antichrist is coming. The stage is being set for him in the ecumenical movement, in the quest to make the iron stick to the clay in Europe, in the globalization of the world economy. The stage is being set for Antichrist. And the Holy Spirit is showing people that he was wisdom. Count the number of the beast. Be alert, watch for these signs, Jesus said. The Holy Spirit is showing more and more people that pre-tribulationism is a doctrinal error, an invention of the Darbyists, an invention of Darby, a cult leader, and a heretic. Pre-tribulationism was invented by a heretic and a cult leader. It's not found in scripture. Dr. Wolverine admitted it. Now, do good people believe it? Yes, let's talk about it. I'm not going to divide with you over it, but they're dividing with us. Why are they fighting with this? Why are they breaking fellowship with it? Why are they going to the extremes like Paul Wilkinson saying that you don't love Jesus Christ? That Corey Tenboom didn't love Jesus Christ? That Charles Spurgeon didn't love Jesus Christ? That Walter Martin didn't love Jesus Christ? That A.W. Tozer didn't love Jesus Christ? No, Paul Wilkinson, you're screwed up in your head. You're spiritually distorted. Why are they doing this? Why are they fighting over it like it's a fundamental? Satan does not want the church to be ready for the return of Jesus. Satan does not want the church to be prepared for persecution. Satan does not want the church to know how to identify the Antichrist and false prophet when he gets here. So he attempts to deceive the elect, and he's doing it. It's not just that our pre-trib brethren, People who I love, who I know, who I like, are misguided on that point. We can deal with that. The Holy Spirit can show them. We can discuss it. But when they turn it into a fundamental, as if it was the deity of Christ or the authority of Scripture against tradition or a compromise on justification by faith, that is crazy. And look how angry and malicious even they can become over it, saying the cruelest things as Paul Wilkinson did or even resorting to Jehovah's Witness doctrine to defend it, as T.A. McMahon did. We can base doctrine on interpolation. T.A. McMahon admitted it's not even in there. We have to extrapolate it. And then he compares it to the Trinity. See, the Trinity's not in there, but we believe it because we extrapolate it. No, the Trinity is in there. It is directly taught in Acts chapter 7. It is directly explained by Jesus in John 14 through 17. The dynamics of the three persons of the triunity are explained by Jesus. 
The Trinity is literally taught. The T.A. McMahon says, no one is it. He resorts to the teaching of the Jehovah's Witnesses to defend three trib. Why would they hunt air by de facto default? By default. Embrace the Jehovah's Witness teaching that the Trinity is not literally taught in order to defend three trib. Why would he do that? Of all people, the heir of Dave Hunt, why would Paul Wilkinson do this? They are deceived by the wicked one. He has convinced them that it's a fundamental, even though Dr. Wolverine admitted you can't prove it exegetically. It's an opinion based on an overview. I respect their right to their opinion in non-essentials liberty. We need to talk about it. But the doctrine of the rapture isn't essential. Its timing is something we should not be dividing over. We need to be discussing. They want to fight. Why do they want to fight? They think they're actually defending fundamental truth. No, they're actually defending an error. They're turning something into a fundamental that is not they're treating something as a basic essential doctrine that is not a basic essential doctrine. And they can become very, very nasty about it. And some of the things they can quote. Jesus called it gnats and camels. Melanchthon called it a diaphora. In essentials, unity. In differences, liberty. In all things, charity. I love my pre trib brethren. May the Lord show them the truth, and may the Lord lead us all into truth. If there's something wrong in my understanding or our understanding, please, Lord Jesus, show us, convict us, correct us, and that above all applies to me. I'm not willing to fight with you over the timing of the rapture. I'll fight over the rapture. I believe in the rapture. And those who deny it, I'll fight about that. But I'm not willing to fight with you, wanting to fight with you over its timing. I only want to discuss with you. I don't want to fight with you. A diaphora, liberty. I don't want to fight with you. Please don't fight with me. I don't think you're a heretic because you disagree with me. Please don't call me a heretic because I disagree with you. A.D. Philip Melanchthon. In essentials, unity. In differences, liberty. In all things, charity. I love my free trip brethren, and may God bless every one of them. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. 
the three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.